Lately I've been noticing how much I've been blessed With people love, peace of mind and happiness It makes me want to pass along the love I've received As a way of giving thanks for what's been given to me I've got a strong heart and I'm ready I've got a strong love I've been given to make this world a better place to live in. I'm ready to use the gifts I've been given to make this world a better place to live in. So are you ready to use the gifts you've been given? Yes. 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 You know, last week we started with sharing how each of you felt after Hurricane Matthew. And what I heard again and again was the gratitude. What I heard were strong hearts. What I heard was strong love. And what I heard was that you are all making a difference in this world by being who you are. Today's talk is spiritual explorers. In Tuesday morning's class, David came in wearing this hat. And the class said, David, what's up with the hat? I'm a spiritual explorer. <laughs> so if you're sitting in here this morning, you too are a spiritual explorer. You're a searcher, a seeker. This one's spiritual power is spiritual zeal. That's the inner urge within us to move forward spiritually, to seek and find what we haven't found before. To find what we have not found, we must journey where we have not traveled before. To see what we have not yet seen, we must look where we have not yet looked before. And to learn what we have not yet learned, we must open our minds to what we have not thought before. We must open our thinking to new pathways. Spiritual explorers are trailblazers, are pioneers. And they dare to venture into the new, the mysterious, and the unknown realms of spirit. So our founders of Unity, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, were spiritual explorers. I think you each received a sheet a little bit about Unity when you came in. They were pioneers in what we call the New Thought Movement that began here in the United States in 1830. And pretty much that's where it, it There was some in England, but mostly New Thought started here. And the interesting thing is that the roots of new thought actually go all the way back to prehistoric wisdom. And then they started getting their foundation in the teachings of Socrates, Plato's, Jesus, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism. So new thought is really not new, it's very old. But it developed and grew here in the United States, especially during the 1980s, through the teachings of, and you've probably heard of many of these people, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Emma Curtis Hopkins, Mary Baker Eddy, Emily Cady, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, Ernest Holmes, Emmett Fox. Have you heard of any of these people? Yes. These were New Thought pioneers, and they chose to ignore the stagnant church teachings of the 1800s and boldly venture beyond religious beliefs of their time. What was the Star Trek thing? To boldly go where no man has gone before? Yeah. Conventional Christian church in the United States in the 1800s, and some places even now, was monolithic, fixed, rigid, dogmatic, dictative, one-sided. New thought teachings unity teachings are not. 
So we're going to briefly go through the unity teachings. One power, one presence. There's an infinite intelligence that's everywhere present. It's universal to all people. Divinity within us all. We're all spiritual beings. No matter how we're behaving, and that's what we're called on. Even though this person before me is not really acting the way I like, can I remember in this moment that way down inside there, there's a spark of divinity the way there is in me. That helps me not react so much to people that are in my face. Law of mind action. What we think, the thoughts we have about what we see, become our living experience. Think about that. What I'm thinking about is how I'm going to perceive everything out here, right? So I get to change my life as I change my thinking. And the fourth one is prayer and meditation. Why? Because when we're in prayer and meditation, we stop. We become still. I love this meditation song we have. When I say a gentle yes to everything that is. That's what I do in prayer and meditation. And when I can do that, I align myself. I become more aware of the infinite energy around us. I can feel it. And the last one, to practice all the above. Because they aren't any good if I don't practice them, right? The highest spiritual principle that we can live from is to love everyone unconditionally. Wouldn't it be a different world? But because these were not the teachings of the churches in the 1800s and a lot of churches today, unity was seen as a cult. And you can sometimes Google unity and it will come up and talk about unity being a cult. If you look up the word cult, any kind of an organization is a cult, actually. But unity has grown to be the largest new thought movement. And it is all over the world now. It's impacted millions of people. And some people that we know very well. Dan, you have that video ready? And would you turn the lights down, please? <laughs> and see, I don't mean, I think, I think love is that condition in the human spirit so profound that it allows us to forgive. Mm -hmm. And it, it may be the energy which keeps the stars in the firmament. Yes. I'm not sure. It may be the energy which keeps the blood running smoothly through our veins. I'm not sure. But it's something beyond the explanation, it can be used for anything you can explain, any good thing you can explain. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Where do you go for solace, for comfort? Are there books that you read? Or when Maya Angelou needs comforting, yes. yeah. What, yes. do you, what do you use? I, I'm a student of unity. And there's a book called The Lessons Unity Church? Unity yeah. Church. Mm -hmm. Maya first discovered the Unity Church in her 20s after her voice coach and mentor Fred Wilkerson invited her to a service there. Founded in 1889, Unity is a Christian movement that emphasizes affirmative prayer and education as a path to spirituality. I took a course in Unity about two years ago online, not to become a member, a minister, uh -huh. but just to understand more deeply there's a book called Lessons in Truth. Wow. And in the book, there's a line which is, God loves me. And when I came to read it to my then mentor, Frederick Wilkerson, uh, the late Frederick Wilkerson, mm -hmm. I read, God loves me. And he said, read it again. And I said, God loves me. He said, read it again. Mm. Read it again. And finally, I said, God loves me. Mm. It 
it still humbles me that this force, which made leaves and fleas and, and stars and rivers and, and you, loves me. Me, Maya Angelou. It's amazing. I can do anything and do it well. Any good thing, I can do it. That's why I am who I am. Yes, because God loves me and I'm amazed at it and grateful for it. So when someone questioned you about this movement, God loves me. And back at them, God loves you. Like Maya Angelou, like Oprah, we each have the ability to dare greatly, to become spiritual explorers, and to make this world a better place. And we all have the tools necessary. Is it easy? Maybe not. Is it worth it? Absolutely. So Fern and I were at the Big Sky Retreat in Montana, where we listened to Mary Morrissey several times. And one of the things she told us, everything of value has a price. She asked us, what are you willing to invest to rise up higher? New thought. Different, not so much anymore. But am I willing? Am I willing to walk this path, this journey, to walk up? rise up higher. Mary Morrissey talked about Henry David Thoreau. You know about him spending two years, two months in a cabin in Walden Pond, Massachusetts, because he wanted to remove himself from the daily routines of life. He wanted to gain a better understanding of life. So he went to this cabin, and he chose to live deliberately by immersing himself in nature, and we have his quote on the screen here, and Mary Morrissey actually had a picture of her behind this. She was so happy to have gone there. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life, and see if I could not learn what it had to teach me, not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. One day, Thoreau was walking to the lake for his daily wash-up bath type of thing, and he realized that every day he was walking the same path to the lake, that he changed everything in his life, but he was still following this same path. And he realized that even if I change everything in my life, unless I change my thinking, nothing changes. He realized that we have to create a new path of thinking. Not just the way we live, but in our thoughts. Thoreau was a spiritual explorer. And he came away from Walden Pond with a greater understanding of life and of the universal law that anyone can create abundance. We just saw Maya Angelou and Oprah. They've created so much abundance. And look where their foundation is. Look where their belief system is. We can create the life we desire, no matter the circumstances, by changing the pathway of our thinking. So how long are you willing to continue traveling down that same old, predictable, powerless pathway of thinking? Ask yourself that. When there's this power, this presence, this abundance that's so readily available that can change our life, in the lives of our family, friends, and this world. And those of you in Prosperity Plus, that's what you're learning about. What will it cost you? 
And are you willing to pay the price to become a spiritual explorer, a real spiritual explorer? What are you willing to invest to rise up higher? Dan, do you have those? Are you willing to stop speaking from the script your history has given you? What does that mean? It means what your parents have taught you, your grandparents have taught you, your old church, your culture. Do you find that sometimes you're just thinking the same way they did? The next one, Dan. Are you willing to leave your old story for a new one? That's a big one. Notice how many times you tell your story. You're allowed to tell it three times, I tell people. Three times. The next one. Are you willing to change the pathway of your thinking? I know you are. That's why you're here. You're all doing that. The next one. Are you willing to spend more time in prayer, meditation, and silence? That's the big one. That's the big one. That was the last one, right? No, there's one more. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Are you willing to practice unconditional love toward, I should have put all capitals, all people? It's easy to do it to each other in here, isn't it? Let's take that outside of this room. Our early American pioneers made a difference in what this country was to become. They moved westward, encountering dangers, hardships, because they weren't content with what? With the way their lives were. And they knew there was something better out there beyond the horizon. So a pioneer is one who goes before, who prepares the way for others. Are you ready to do that? And they did it with determination, with optimism, with enthusiasm, which is our power this month, zeal. They made a pathway through the wilderness because they believed there was something better on the other side. That's what we're doing. We're leading the way. We're making the pathway. Just like Oprah has done in so many of her shows, like Maya Angelou has done with her poems. We create this pathway so others can follow. The pioneers in the 1800s of New Thought were not satisfied with this superficial rhetoric doctrines of the man-centered religion then. Because by that time, religion, if you've studied the, the history of Christianity, it became completely man-made. And it, it was done by Constantine. And then people started to believe it was the law of God, but it really wasn't. They hungered. And that's what started you on this path of unity. They thirst for something more. And they were willing to go places forgotten by decades of man-made tradition. Remember, prehistoric wisdom. If you look at Native American belief systems, you'll see very similar to what unity is teaching. What unity teaches is the basic foundation under the beliefs, under belief systems. And then what happens is you put man-made stuff on top of that, and we begin to forget what the real belief is. These new pioneers in the 1800s did something very bold. They dared to imagine a new way of seeing and knowing God. Because up until then, God was this, this man with a big white beard up in the sky, throwing lightning bolts a few if you weren't good. And that's one of the biggest beliefs for us to overcome. There is no, no nothing judging us. I mean, we live at the space center, right? I mean, we know what's up there. We know that there's not this place with this supreme being living up there. And we know what's, what's down in the center of the earth. We know it's not a place where this demon lives. We knew it's just hot, molten lava. So where, where is this heaven and hell? And if you've been in unity long enough, you know it's right here. You ever feel like you have to get out of your head that's driving you crazy? Yeah. 
creating our own hell in there. And then when we're in that place of meditation, when we just say that tender yes, you feel that upliftment. You feel yourself lifted up. And that's heaven. Jesus said, heaven is right here. The kingdom of heaven is right here on earth. Spiritual explorers, you all, are always looking for higher vantage points so you can catch a glimpse of that path ahead of you. And spiritual explorers aren't satisfied by secondhand reports. And if you're a unity minister, you really know this about you guys. They say about unity, they're, they're, it's like herding cats. You can't hurt them. And that's wonderful. <laughs> because you're drawn to this, this because you are an individual. Because you want to do it your way. Because no one is going to tell you how it's supposed to be. You have to come and know it for yourself. You have to feel it inside you. Reading it in a book, hearing it from others is great. It inspires us. But until I know it, until I get it, it's not real for me. It's not going to work for me. Until I get it, till I know it, I'm not going to know that heaven here on earth. So just as Thoreau immersed himself in nature, are you willing to immerse yourself in the unknown, the uncharted, the unexplored realms of spirit? I know you are. This is, and this is what Einstein called. I love this. The unexplored, the uncharted, the unknown realms of spirit. He called it the beauty of the mysterious. The beauty of the mysterious. Because that's what it is. It's, there's a veil there. And that if I'm willing and brave enough to move that veil, to walk through that veil, the beauty on the other side takes my breath away. So this week, are you willing to explore the beauty of the mysterious? If you are, one, I want you to notice when you're speaking from the script of your ancestors, your parents, your grandparents. I catch myself all the time. But notice, pay attention, and when you see yourself doing that, just stop and say, okay, how can I change my thinking about this? Right then and there, change your, your pathway. And three, spend more time in the silence, in meditation. I say five minutes a day. If you're doing five minutes, do 10. If you don't have enough time for it, I'm going to tell you right now, if you spend that five or 10 minutes, you're going to have more time because your day's going to go so much smoother. This week, hey, David, bring your prop and come on up here. <laughs> this week, to help make this place a better world to live in, you're going to down your spiritual explorer hat, just like David. It's his fault we have this talk. God bless you. <laughs> Lately I've been noticing how much I've been blessed with people love, peace of mind, and happiness. It makes me want to pass along the love I've received as a way of giving thanks for what's been given to me. I've got a strong heart and I'm ready. I've got a strong love and I'm ready. I'm ready to use the gifts I've been given to make this world a better place to live in. I'm ready to use the gifts I've been given to make this world a better place to live in. have a need for more that bordered on greed till I looked around and found that I have all that I need and I thought I had to have it all before I could share till I realized what's mine to give has always been there I've got a strong heart and I'm ready I've got a 
I've been 